final day of the rookie mini camp. Only, once again, I thought there'd be more for what it was. I can only go based off their website since I can't actually be there. Which was only three interviews by players. Once again, only no coaches that I saw so far from tonight anyway. So, sorry if this isn't updated enough. But, um, with the three players that were there, Daniel Hunter, Michael Pruitt, and Bala Tunde Ayakbusi, the Poland guy that we haven't really seen much of, like the 6'9", 6'8", 350-pounder. He's a mammoth, that's for sure. Basically, they're just trying to tap into Daniel Hunter's potential. That that was pretty obvious right when we drafted him, since he's a he's he's a freak athletically. We just need to redshirt him a year or two, maybe maybe not even redshirt. Like I think we could get him some playing time, just not. We can't really give him too significant a playing time because I don't think he's stout enough against the run, even because he's only two fifty two. He needs to bulk up a bit. For our system, so that'd be kind of nice to have him at around maybe, maybe 260, 265 around that range. That'd be nice to have him there because he doesn't have to play at a 270, 275 because he is more of a speed rusher than anything. So he's probably gonna back up Griffin at the right end, not so much Robin Robinson at the left end because I think at left end we have Crichton, but. But B.J. Dubose, like, he he looks a lot like Crichton to me, so I wonder what the plan is there. They said Dubose is a Dubose is a right end. I don't really see that in him. I think he's actually a little bit too slow to be a right end. So I think he's more of a left. So that, I think that's going to be kind of a battle to see which, which one's more athletic will be switched to right, I think. Even though I feel like it would be Dubose since he's a sixth-round pick and... Lower rounds usually don't get to be second string immediately playing for significant playing time, maybe. So I feel like they're going to try to give Crichton a shot here over. Which he can't be that much worse than Wooten, can he? Wooten didn't do anything last year. Like, he had one sack. So I, I think Crichton can get on the field and get us at least two, one and a half. Which immediately replaces, replaces Corey Wooten. So, there's that. And Hunter Hunter can be a premier pass rusher in this league, perhaps. Like, if we can get the right potential in him. So, which would be one insane package on passing down. to so put in Sharif Floyd and move Crichton to the inside. Have Griffin and uh, Hunter on the ends. That could be insane on the blitz packaging that we could do. Because we still have Barr. So... Uh, so let's move on to uh, Ayag Busi. Ayag Busi basically just said like that the main difference wasn't necessarily speed because they had athletes over there in Poland. He just said it was technique and coaching, which I can see. I can see that because like you're gonna get athletes around the world, like because you know Olympics and other sports that we don't really do as much here in this country as we as other do like because we're the only ones that really play this sport in this country so i can see how that could be more of a you know like it's really only the coaching and the technique because the technique doesn't have to be as good in there because the coaching's not as good so you can only be so good in some areas as good as your coaches so that that to me made sense I don't know where Ike Boosie falls on this, because especially with the addition of three tackles, he's going to be fighting for a roster spot, maybe a practice squad spot, because he's very raw. He may be cut and just not obtained to practice squad because of his age. He is around 27 already. so And I can see them trying to like go towards a guy who we just get, got drafted, as in like uh, between Austin Shepard. And Tyrus Thompson, if it comes down to it, pretty sure they'd get rid of Ike Boosie strictly because the age thing. Like with Shepard and uh, Thompson, we have more of we have more years with to develop that. Ike Boosie's already 27. We have three or four years before he really starts to hit a decline. So I don't think if I think if he can't produce immediately 
we may get rid of him. Like so, if he's not second, at least second string caliber right now, I don't know if he's gonna even make the roster. So I don't know. That's how I feel about that. And then the other interview that they had was Michael Pruitt. This one was kind of interesting because they kind of all said the same thing, like, it's just great to get back to football, all those things, yada, yada, yada. Except they said they're trying to put him at two positions here, meaning tight end, and I'm assuming that fullback, H-back position. That's what I'm assuming when he says two positions. I I could see him actually playing both this year because I do ultimately believe he's going to make the 53-man roster. So because of how athletic he is and it may push chase forward a bit but i don't know like as it goes back to the other video i think it's Rhett ellison may be the odd man out because Rhett is more of a blocker anyway and we don't really use a blocking fullback slash tight end in north turner's offense if we did we would have kept jerome felton so that's something to think about <laughs> So Pruitt would fit more because, because let's get, let's be honest. There's a good chance Rudolph gets hurt again. So he's fragile. Like I have hopes that he doesn't get hurt again. It'd be nice, but I don't know if he can. Hasn't really proven he can play a 16 game season every single year, or even a 13 game season for that matter. So I think adding another athletic tight end guy like Pruitt who can also play that H back fullback position kind of thing that Norv likes to have because I think this way we can run a two tight end set when Rudolph's healthy to have both uh, Rudolph, Pruitt, and Zach Lyon in the backfield there for that. And then we can just do play fakes to PD all day long and then we can get some deep fielders in Patterson. A lot of our receivers are deep guys if you haven't noticed by the way. Mike Wallace, Jarius Wright, well, Jarius Wright doesn't, he has that sneaky kind of speed, and he does get deep, uh, Patterson, hopefully Patterson, Stephon Diggs, Charles Johnson, he has good speed out there too, he ran a 4.37 at his pro day, so, we have a lot of those kind of guys, kind of frustrated me that we didn't get a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, that red zone threat kind of guy. So, that did frustrate me a little bit, but I kind of feel like since Teddy doesn't have the biggest arm anyway, they're not looking for, like, a guy who can run down the field and catch those jump balls because we're not going to be throwing that too often. We're going to have this offense in particular more about the timing routes and, like, the underneath routes. So we have guys like Cordero Patterson and Stephon Diggs who can take the ball and break a tackle and run 50 yards. That's why I think this offense is built. And then we have the tight ends as little security blankets, and we have Peterson in the back. I personally think the offense can work up to this potential very well, especially with Bridgewater at the helm and his very cool under-pressure composure. So I think that's that the offense will shape up, regardless if Pruitt only plays tight end or just H-back or both. I think Pruitt might, I don't, I'm not saying Pruitt's going to be like the major contributor here, but I can see him doing some, he can, I see him making some plays. That's all I'm saying. Like, I'm not saying that he's going to be the Pro Bowl caliber guy. He's going to be, I thought he was a pretty good value for what he had done in college. Granted, that was at like Southern Illinois, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong in that, but he sh and he was the top leading tight end among receiving records all time, pretty much, I think, for their for their school. And he led all of the division the division uh two, I think. Was it? yeah. Division two uh colleges for the tight end receptions and all those other things. So he can definitely do it and Pruitt is not really as explosive as his measurables would say with his six two, six three, around two fifty three. Four, I want to say 252 pound frame like he doesn't like his measurables don't match up really to his ex like the explosiveness that they would say he's more of he's going to catch it and just go straight forward and he's not going to break too many tackles 
but he can sometimes. Like, he's not the most flashy guy for what his measurables say. That's what I'm trying to say here. But he's going to catch the ball. He's very sure-handed. And he does catch jump balls, which I think is one thing. I think the red zone kind of threat was knocked out when we drafted him because I have seen him jump for 50-50 balls and come down with them more than not. So he has great hands, very good at that. He's a decent boundary receiver for a tight end. So I feel like that's going to be that's going to be good for this red zone threat cuz then even then like we're going to like if Rudolph gets hurt, we can just put Pru out wide. He's as fast as some receivers these days. So we can put him out wide, throw a goal line fade out there. We can give it to PD in the back, and we'll be fine. Anyway, that's all I got for today, really. Not too much. Not too much. I'm sorry, my friends. <laughs> anyway, farewell. See you next time.